How's it going guys? My name is Splattercat and welcome to the next episode of our Towns LP. Where we had left off, we had been building this very charming little hospital. I've made a few modifications since the last time you've seen it. Obviously I added these little wooden pillars, or maybe not so obviously, I don't know. It's obvious to me. I like it a lot better with these little pillars added, and I think we should just cap this thing off and call it what it is. So, to finish off the hospital, I am going to turn the game back on here. And I'm a little skept- I'm, I'm a little freaked out by the fact still that I have not seen any sieges. We're not going to worry about it too much, but in the future we are going to have to watch out. Now for what I want to do with the roof, we are going to need red walls. So let's go ahead and get ourselves started on a little flower bed that we can get some of the inks and dyes and things like that that we need. Let's take a look here and find a good spot to place it. I don't see any... Well, I don't see any really amazing spot to drop this thing in, but there's got to be one around here somewhere. Let's see... I suppose what we can do is we'll put it down, maybe over here, and then we'll clear this hill out so that we can make our tavern next. So let's go ahead and go down to the base floor, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom. We're going to go to our tilling menu. Actually, do we want to till? I think we do want to till just for now. We're going to till out a little space. Let me look back over here and see if there's any space here. I'm semi-tempted to continue expanding this out this way so that all of our farming is in the exact same region. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be that useful for us, so I guess I'll come back over here and we'll till maybe this out right here. And there's two, four, and six. There we are. And that gives us enough for each color, just a little bit of each color flower so that we can get some dyes done in the future. Down here, I'm continuing to mine out stone so that we can continue with our creative projects. I think we have, let's take a look, we've got 400 stone, which is going to be very nice. It's going to help us get things done in the upcoming episodes. Let's take a look and see, we've got a merchant here it says. Let's take a look and it looks like he's a ironmonger, so he's a weapon dealer. Let's go through and see what he's got. Ooh, that's tempting. The Head Crusher. So that thing's got about 33,000 damage, which is pretty impressive, but it would pretty much clean out our entire money supply. And I would like to keep something on hand just for a rainy day because you never really know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to ignore him entirely. We'll sell him some of the worthless stuff that we have here. Actually, I can't guarantee that that longsword isn't deep, deep down in the dungeon somewhere. So... Let's see what else we have. One thing that I wish that the developers would change is if you look here, Iron Greaves are 144 gold, but Diorite Greaves with a white modifier, which are substantially better, are really not worth much more money. I kind of wish you could get a bit more cash for that sort of thing, but, you know, no point complaining about it. Let's sell a stone mace just to get him the hell out of here and out of our hair. I apologize if the audio sounds like it's echoing in this episode. I actually spent all day moving, so, you know, there's boxes everywhere. I'm basically recording this in an empty room. I pretty much set the computer up on, like, an egg crate and got going because I knew I had to pump out an episode. Like, I really, really wanted to get you guys an episode. I didn't want to break schedule. I feel bad whenever I do it, so I figured I should knock this bad boy out. And you know what's super gnarly? I went out for dinner today to celebrate, like, moving into a new apartment. Just moving into a new region is always kind of exciting. We went out for dinner, and we're at a pizza parlor, and this dude is sitting there with his kid, and I'm having a conversation with a dinner guest who had helped us move because I decided to, you know, I grabbed dinner because... You know, when people come to help you move, not everybody, well, I guess nobody likes to help move. It's really not a pleasant thing. It's a lot of lifting, it's a lot of working, and especially if you're on the second floor. So there's a lot of heavy furniture going up and down stairs. And so, you know, I wanted to pay for dinner. But in any case, we're having a conversation, and I keep just trailing off, because in the corner, there's this guy, and he's eating a pizza with his son. Now, in and of itself, that's not anything weird, but he keeps allowing his son to feed him. Now, when I say feed him, there's a little bit of clarification that needs to be done here his son would take a chunk of pizza in his mouth so the little child who's probably five or six years old would take a bit of pizza in his mouth and then deposit it into his father's mouth so it was like they were making out with pizza in between them and it was just i couldn't hold a conversation it was just probably one of the grossest things i've ever seen two human beings do out in public and so <laughs> you can't blame the kid but you'd think at a certain point the dad would be like hey now we need to knock this off this is kind of gross this is escalating this is escalating rather quickly and now let's plant some red flowers here so we'll get a nice row not to switch topics too quickly 
And then we'll also plant a nice row of yellow flowers there. And then we'll also do a row of blue flowers. And so with all of our primary colors taken care of, that should allow us in the future to make all the dyes and things of that nature that we could ever need. So hopefully the townies at this point skip to Malu and take pair or take pair take pair of business. No, take care of business. I was seeing those pear trees, and for whatever reason, I totally jumped subjects. Now what else can we work on while they're planting these? They are going to run far and wide, so if you're a newer player and you're telling people to plant things, be careful because they will run all over the map to take care of business and they will get themselves killed by froggies. So that's always a good thing to know. And when I say a good thing to know, I mean a good thing to N.O. Say no to your townies. Do not allow them to go get themselves killed by froggies because in the early game, that is a huge detriment. It kills your productivity, it kills your workflow, and generally just makes your life a living hell. So while they're doing that, let's take a look back and everything considered, I think a good spot for our tavern, I am, I think, going to go ahead with the idea where we take the tavern and we're going to have a walkway which goes from here. So this is going to be kind of an outdoor, well, like a veranda or something of that nature, like an outdoor yard, basically, when there's going to be tables and you can eat there. And then also what I think I'll do is I will place guards down here so that you always have somebody posted here and here just in case things come up. We may put some booby traps down in here. I've seen other players on the town's forums do a similar thing where if there's a path from the bottom to the top, they just line it with all kinds of crazy traps and it tends to knock off anything that comes at you. Now, I apologize, I had to clear my throat there for just a second. I don't know if you caught that, but anyways, I hope I caught it in time. If not, eh, you know, sometimes you get a catch in your throat. There is dust everywhere from moving, so in the moving process, there's just little puffs of hair everywhere. The cat keeps looking at me and kind of winking and snickering as his fur floats through the air. It's allergy season. All th I don't know if you guys have allergies, but I personally, oh my god, I spent about four months of the year with my entire face sucked shut. It just looks like my face is made out of like, there's like sphincters basically. My face is made out of sphincters. My mouth, my eyes, all sucked into sphincters. And I can't see, I can't breathe, and you know, I've tried everything. I've tried prescriptions, I've tried to fix it all kinds of crazy ways. Nothing seems to work, so I chose to suffer. And that's what we do from here on out. And it looks like my townies are going to have to deal with allergies as well. Planting all these flowers, going to be all kinds of pollen in the air. It's going to be very, very unpleasant. But, you know, the... The elements seem to be rather kind here. We have not exposed ourselves to the elements. I exposed myself to the elements once, and that's how I learned what a class 2 felony was. But <laughs> the weather here in the township of Boo seems to be quite fair. There's no rain. It's sunny all the time, which you think would get a little old. But then again, maybe the suicide rates are really low, aside from the people I send off to their deaths. Please plant the field a little quicker, townies. Please. There's only a few left. There we go. So they're planting that. Now, I don't know. Let's take a look at our automation menu, and we'll see if it's possible to automatically gain your flowers back. I am going to save, though, just in case, because, once again, I still have that crashing bug. I think version 11 made it kind of go away a little bit, but still, it does happen every now and again. It doesn't seem to happen quite as frequently. And looking through here, it's not going to be in the food menu, so yeah, I don't think we can automatically harvest dyes just yet. So the thing about dyes is you are going to have to do it by hand. There we are. And I'm on the wrong layer. Let's get to the right layer. As always, I'm trying to grab things before I'm not on the proper layer. And then we'll go through here. There we go. And once that's all taken care of, let's build ourselves an atelier. I learned that in our last LP. One of my kind community members was like, it's pronounced atelier. It's not pronounced atelier. And he saved me from looking tremendously ignorant. So thanks for that. The atelier will probably fit in this region somewhere. So let's take a look with our blocks and see what we can fit in. Let's go back to our template, our ancient walls here that we were using for everything else. And let's see if we can get the atelier squeezed into this area. I don't really know if it's going to be possible, but we're going to try. We're going to do our best. So maybe a door right there. There we are. And quite possibly we will wall this off. I, I'm i not sure how pleasant this is going to look. This may look very wonky and strange. But we're going to do the best we can with what we have because building space is limited and I would like to confine a lot of my crafting just to this little area. So I would like to keep the vast amount of our crafting taking place in this building. I know I used up a bit of space right here for personal housing. It's, you know, it's not a waste of space, but 
it does eat up a little bit of room. I do think we can fit the atelier in here though, and we'll just place maybe some decorations in here or something of that nature. I have no clue. This little hallway is kind of ugly. Maybe I'll fix it in between episodes. I'll let you know what I come up with. I also don't know how many floors I want to raise this thing to. I don't really know if I want to make this much larger. It is turning out pretty cool. I really like this building. I love the way it's turning out. I love its functionality, and I love the way the whole thing just flows. As you can see, these stone barrels are working really well. I brought this up in the last episode that I had put some stone barrels here, and I had hines, uh, hired some people to do all of the hauling. And that's taking care of the kind of drudgery of some of this. So it's making a little bit quicker. As you can tell, productivity is way, way, way up, which is very, very cool. And let's place a final block right there. I mean, we'll put it right there just so it has a little bit of a rounded effect, but I can't guarantee it's going to look nice. Right now, we're totally just looking for a QDOS solution, just a quick and dirty operating solution. There we go. I was trying to figure out, <laughs> I was trying to figure out the acronym. So we have a QDOS now, and let's go to our zoning menu, and the Atelier is this little one right here with the shirt and the hat on a pole. And I think we can make this work out very nicely. We'll expand it. Maybe we'll call this whole area the Atelier, just so the floor tiles match. And there we go. And I don't know about you guys, let me know what you think. How do you guys feel about the way that Boo is turning out? If you guys have any ideas, throw them out. I actually was playing around with the idea of making a Pokemon stadium around here somewhere, or maybe just a Pokemon field once we get the tavern done. Getting a little bit more creative as it draws out further and further, maybe building a McDonald's. I, I watch a lot of Corrales. I don't know if you guys are into Minecraft building, but there's a guy named Corrales. You should definitely check out his channel, K-E-R-A-L-I-S, and he builds all kinds of crazy stuff in Minecraft, just kind of houses and things of that nature no crazy like space station type stuff but he's very original guy he's a very creative dude and he gets to be inspired every time I watch him so you should definitely check him out and you know let me know what you think about his work too because every time I watch him I come out impressed now let's see we could put the color mixing benches in here so we will just line this with color mixing benches there we go, and I like the way that turned out. I mean, it's a little, you know, it's a lot of space taken up by our workstations, but it'll still probably look cool. And then we also need a hide skinning table, and that requires iron. So let me take a look at my stocks panel, make sure I have 12 iron. I always like to keep an eye on my iron supply because you never know when you're going to eat your way through it. I don't have any iron mines set up right now, so I kind of want to keep that on the down low just so I can at least get one iron mine built. And it only took one iron for these, right? Okay, one wood and one iron, and we just built what looks like eight of them. So that leaves me four. Let me pause the game for just a moment and make sure that the mine that I built does not... Okay, it only takes one iron. That's good. All right. Fantastic. Continue on your way, townies. Have fun. So, once those are there, we should be able to make ourselves some dye, and if you'll remember, we were working on the hospital, which is why this whole messy business became, you know, it became required in the first place. So let's see here what we can do. Let me grab my white blocks, and we'll go like this, and like that. Actually, no. Let's do this out of... Well, well, never mind. We'll do it out of the white blocks. We will do it out of the white blocks. I'm not going to change the plan now. We will stay the course. Stay the course, my friends. And there we are. When in doubt, eh, stay the course. You know what I mean? Just stick with it. Don't give up. Just keep bearing forward your head to the wind and hope that everything turns out the way you want it. As I always say, and as Bob Ross always said before that, which is where I learned it from, there's no such thing as mistakes. Unless you kill somebody. <laughs> And so there we are. We have our next little line of blocks taken care of. Let me unpause the game because honestly, I didn't even realize it was paused. I was hoping people would continue to work on things while that was being done. Now these hide skinning tables are going to allow us to skin things. I haven't really messed around too much with what we can use the skins for. I'll take a look and figure it out in the near future and maybe we can make some cool stuff with what comes from the proceeds. Let me make sure, I'm going to lay down a layer here by hitting the Z key and make sure that everything's looking nice because we are going to have a little emblem for our hospital on the top here. We're going to denote this as a hospital. It should look pretty cool. At least I hope it will. If it doesn't, well, it'll probably look a little janky, but what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? Now, taking a look at the wall, 
it looks like it's going to shoot through that way, so adding a room right here is not going to work. And adding a room over here is going to make it look a little weird with our clown house, which I did try and put a window in, but it didn't match, so I'm probably going to go back in just a little bit and get rid of that window. I still haven't fixed the roof. I know I'm procrastinating like crazy, guys. It is what it is. This moving process, I, my old roommate moved out, and it's taken me almost like a week and a half just to get the flying monkeys out of the rafters. <laughs> but she's finally vacated the premises, and so I have a new roommate in now. I should be able to get a bit more done. How are you guys feeling about me expanding the indie shorts kind of playthroughs? I really like those, and I don't know what you guys think. They take a little bit more time to put together, but I really think they're a bit more rewarding then just continuing the same series over and over and over again. Obviously, I'm going to keep making these videos, but I would like to make a lot more indie reviews. Let me know what you guys think of the indie reviews. If you don't think that they're worthwhile for the channel or, you know, I, don't, I really don't know how many people come here to check out the indie reviews, to be honest. I, I have no way to specifically check whether or not people are seeing those at a higher rate than anything else, but, you know... I'd like to hear from you guys. I always like to hear your opinions about the channel. It helps me do things to keep things efficient, keep things looking nice. And actually, we want to keep that going all the way up. We want this little wood kind of reinforcement bar to f go all the way up to the ceiling on both sides over here. And so let me add that real fast. There we go. And once these blocks are in place, I don't know. Let me count these. So we've got seven spaces. All right, so that'll work. That will work. So we've got two, two. Okay, so yeah, I've got a good feeling about this. Let's do it. So we need some way to denote this as a hospital so that when our helicopters come around, they know exactly where to land. And so hopefully this turns out and it doesn't look ridiculous. There's, you know, there's a possibility it might look absolutely ridiculous. But what's the problem with looking ridiculous every now and again? So once we get these placed, we are going to need some... Do we need red dyes? No, we just need red flowers. Okay, good. And so hopefully, let me swing over to our field over here and make sure that those are being harvested appropriately. All right, and once they wheedle their way through all of these, we should be able to go back and re-harvest them again. I don't really like how I have to harvest those manually, so if I had to make a change right now based on what's... What's the most irritating kind of functionality that I have at the moment? Or the most irritating lack of functionality would definitely be that. Let's plant some more trees here. Let's make sure we always have enough apples and things. You can never have too many apples. I am an apple addict. I don't know about you guys, but I love, love, love apples. We may need to plant further wheat fields in the future, so... Maybe keep... Well, we'll make another one in another location. If it comes down to that, we'll make one in another spot. There we are. And all in all, I really like the way the township of Boo is shaping up. We have to get ourselves like a little fiesta. I don't know about you guys and where you live, but where I live, we have this thing called Fiesta Days, which is basically a giant party. It's, you know, it's basically a giant party that goes on for about a week. And so the whole downtown area is full of carnivals and like funnel cakes and funnel cakes are amazing. I don't know if you guys have ever had the opportunity to have a funnel cake, but it has the word fun in the name. It is impossible to be unhappy while eating a funnel cake. If you are able to be unhappy while eating a funnel cake, you should send me a picture and I will eat my words or eat a funnel cake either way. But there's just a giant carnival about to be going on. All the bars downtown have super cheap beers. It's generally going to be a blast. And I hope that your hometown has something like that. Some kind of fun get together for the community where everybody can have fun, drink some beers, go on some rides, except for the zipper. That thing is just hazardous in every way imaginable. People from overseas, I don't know if Europeans have this ride, it's called the zipper, and basically you build it with a wrench, and it's like 400 feet tall, and then you get in it and you just pray that you don't die. The thing is really kind of an insurance salesman's wet dream. It's, it's awful. Like, it really is awful, but you should go on it. Or the Gravitron. I don't know if you guys ever had the opportunity to go on the Gravitron. It's basically a... Uh, in a nutshell, it's a big spinning flying saucer that pins you against the wall with centrifugal force. And <laughs> I was in one one time and a dude yacked and like just barf was centrifugally smacked into his face, like his own vomit. It was, it <laughs> was brutal. But sometimes people get kind of creative and they try and do flips right as it accelerates so they'll be upside down pinned against the wall, just all kinds of crazy stuff. Generally unsafe things to try out. And let's go ahead and harvest out the rest of these flowers before I get too caught up talking about all kinds of zany crazy stuff. There we go. And so it looks like we have enough flowers left. 
And once this is all finished up, let me make sure I can. Did I count that right? Something looks very off right now, and I can't really put my finger on what it is. Are they still... Okay, there's my last two blocks. Let's make sure all this functionality is going on over here. We are just tiptoeing through the tulips. Okay, and then we'll go back. and Let's get the next layer placed. There we go. Nice and pretty. Very nice. I like that very much. And now that that's in place, we can take a look down. Let's play around with some of the ideas that I have for going down to the next floor. We can continue the circle spiraling stair all the way down. Let me know what you guys think about it. The spiral staircase is a cool idea, but it takes a lot of work, and it also keeps me from getting down to the floor I want to get to efficiently. However, and that's not lined up either. That sucks. Oh, I remember why I didn't line that up. I didn't line this up because if I mine out the floor right here, nobody will be able to get to any of this stone. It'll basically destroy, it will completely destroy my productivity. It will suck. And so I haven't finished that off yet. You'll have to forgive me. Let's place the next row of these as well. There it is. We'll destroy that stone. And there we are. And we'll get rid of that stone as well. I don't know why there's stone sitting on top of a wall. It's probably a hangover from when I went through and cleared out this entire area. I don't really remember. It's been a while. And let's see, if is this wall lined up per chance? It is indeed. Okay, good. So as long as this wall is lined up, I don't feel too terrible about it. And is that on the plus three? I think they can actually place these blocks from the floor below. We'll test it out right now and see how it goes. And there should be, that's going to go down. This is going to continue down this way. What is that lined up with? Nothing. Okay, so this isn't lined up with anything. So let's go through here and we'll mine that out. And somebody will come along and take care of that. I may try to get a few more citizens in between now and the next episode. I don't know if you guys heard me in the last episode, but if you didn't, I'm going to run through this one more time. Build lots of fisheries or build lots of fishermen posts. They are amazing for keeping your people fed. They are really, really awesome. You can't put them down. And honestly, it makes them happy too, which is icing on the cake. So they're gaining happiness right now while they fish. They fancy themselves to be somewhat fishermen. I enjoy fishing, but I always throw them back. I don't really like fish. I don't like to eat them. And also, you know, I I'm a gentle soul. I don't like to kill things. So, you know, some people, some people are good at it. Some people aren't. Definitely a gatherer, though, I think. I mean, I heard once that, like, if your eyes are close together on the front of your head, that your ancestors were more likely to be hunters than not. I don't know if that's true. Like, my eyes are pretty close on the front, but then again, I'm also pretty much legally blind. So, not so much of a hunter. I did build an adlatl, though, which is pretty freaking cool. If you've never seen an adlatl, it's basically like this little stick that extends your reach and allows you to throw these big, like, three-foot spears. Pretty cool product. So, while they finish off the roof of the hospital over here, I think I'm going to call this episode to a close. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. I hope to see you next time, and I hope that you'll all take care out there. See you next time.